Hello everyone, welcome to the Wednesday trade recap and forecast. So let's get started with our first currency pair. The markets have been really active, took a lot of trades uh, from last Wednesday, which is good. Uh, trending markets, range bound markets. Again, I have my trending entries. I have my range bound entries as well. So what I don't want to see is very volatile markets like we saw a couple of uh, weeks ago on the Japanese pairs. But let's see what we can spot on the euro and the US dollar. So from last Wednesday, which was around here, nothing much happened on the euro and the US dollar. Maybe some people were looking for a liquidity sweep here. I wasn't because I'm looking for very, very high probability entries with a lot of confluences. This one did not have enough confluences for me. Again, this would be a sweep of this area right here, which is going to be full of stop losses. I am going to say that. And then we went up, no entries formed. Then we were flat and range bound, broke the high, no flags formed to enter. Basically nothing. The only entry was right here on this flag. And this looked nice. This definitely fit my plan. Uh, it was a, I would say, a textbook flag formation. So par price action, pretty shit, pretty crappy. Wick here, new scandal, but the new scandal continues. So it's going to be a good sign if you see a new scandal like this one, very big, and then you see momentum immediately continue in a specific direction. What you don't want to see after a new scandal you do not want to see a large and wide range. That is going to be a major warning sign. Okay, so this was actually pretty good that we continued immediately. A flag then forms first high, first low, second high, second low. This candle is going to be the entry candle, right? It's going to happen at one in the morning. But for me, I was waiting for the timed entry. So uh, at Zentum Trading, we use the timed entry for the Euro US dollar and the pound US dollar for taking flags. So this one actually did not fit my plan. Again, I was waiting for that timed entry. And unfortunately, this one did go without me. But that's okay. It's all part of the game. So for anyone that took the initial classic flag entry, you would be running uh, around 1% with a 10 pip stop loss which is gonna be nice so congratulations again it is what it is it's part of the game part of the probabilities for me it did not fit my personal plan because I was waiting for that timed entry um, next time this may do something like this stop the initial entry out and then my timed entry may work a bit better so you never know but we have found that the timed entry does produce better results on a large sample size and it eliminates waking up during the night so it makes things a bit more simple a bit easier on your psychology as well because you do not need to keep waking up every single hour during the night to catch that entry candle okay current price action not really seeing commitment price is breaking the highs and struggling printing i would say an ascending channel so what I do expect is to see something more like this happen, okay? Then a possible reversal setup, look for cells that is in my plan, or maybe the momentum that we saw here can kick back in. In that case, I will be looking for buy setups. So my plan is either to look for a large push up and see this momentum continue, or to look for the price to ascend a bit more in an ascending channel and then reverse in the opposite direction. So that's my game plan for the euro and US dollar. Am I going to put it on the watch list? I actually am going to put it on the watch list because this ascending does look uh, nice. It's starting to look clean, starting to break the high and heavily retrace. So I'm seeing some potential. EJ took a lot of setups on this one. Let's cover it. So I think this actually was last Wednesday, but it was not in the trade recap. Correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, maybe it was. Basically, what I was seeing here, I saw a nice established option. Again, first impulse, pullback, no shift. Second impulse, pullback, no shift. Third impulse, and then nice clean close on the top. So at this point, I did place my pending buy limit for a break and retest order, okay? When I see a formation of three large impulses to the upside and two pullbacks with zero selling pressure as you can see right here no selling pressure 
no selling pressure. I'm very, very happy to execute a trade. This formation does not form very often. When it forms, I definitely want to take advantage. So I did place my order after this candle. Then we had another push up. At this point, I did keep my order in. Okay, because it's the euro and the Japanese yen, I can tolerate, especially on a Wednesday, I can tolerate a bigger retrace to the entry level. And this one does not tag me in. I'm still leaving my order on, seeing the price rejecting this area as well, which is a positive sign. And then we get tagged into the position, almost get taken out. And then price does take us out for a 1% loss. Okay, so this was a 1% loss, but price did continue with the overall push up, which was nice to see. Again, this may have just been a liquidity grab, a stop hunt, just stopping people out, but it is what it is, part of the game, part of the probabilities. So next time when we get in, uh, it may just do this. Take us in and then explode up. Okay, so we got that one covered. Then price continued up. This flag did not fit my personal plan. So there was a flag here, first high, first low, second high, second low. This blue candle is the entry candle. I wanted a bigger push. Okay, the push here was not enough for me. Prior price action was kind of a bit corrective right here. I just would have liked more momentum up, okay? Just more momentum up and then I would have taken this flag. Then we just kind of started to break the structure, range around a little bit, and then we continued with some nice momentum. So this one, textbook, absolute no-brainer, 10 out of 10 flag for me, even on a Monday, okay? So I will execute a trade on a Monday and a Tuesday, even though those are predominantly range-bound days, but I need to see some clean price action. I need to see a clean, large impulse going up like this, okay? So, we got the large push up. And then we have the flag, first high, first low, second high, second low, right there. Uh, no selling pressure, which is nice. Power price action. Well, overall, we are in an uptrend, okay? Price is overall moving up. So it's not the best prior price action, especially because of this, uh, because of this part right here. But I do like this impulse. I like the flag again. Zero selling pressure. It's a small flag. It's a tight flag. Market buy at the close of this candle. Uh, Twelve pips stop loss. Okay. Twelve pips, and then just follow the trade with our trade management rule, and we get taken out right here for around 0.7% winner, okay? So this was a 0.7% win for me. And let's see what happened next. So next, price just kind of correctively moved up. Again, sort of ascending. I was definitely looking for a reversal opportunity right here, but it never happened. I wanted to see that nice clean close, nice clean close on the bottom, okay? Price continued up. And then I did take another flag setup right here. This was a no-brainer for me as well, okay? <clears throat> so basically, prior price action looks, looks like this. Push up, ascending, push up. Now, this is a pattern that I have seen happen on the Euro Japanese Yen a lot of the time, and it works, okay? It definitely works to start a nice uptrend. So we have the final impulse. Yes, a bit of a slowdown on the top. So price is breaking and leaving wicks a little bit. This is part of the trend. Check the highs. Uh, 301, 300. So that's all one impulse. This is all one impulse. And this is the flag plus formation. Okay, so a quick, small, tight flag, absolute no-brainer, very high probability these flags work out very, very nicely. So we have the <clears throat> we have the inside bar, outside bar. Okay, this bar inside is inside of this one. Outside bar eats up this one. See the high is higher, the low is lower, so it's outside of the prior candle. And the blue candle is our entry candle. Now, the reason I did not enter on this candle is because of spread hours, okay? <clears throat> so basically, spread hours were approaching. They were very, very close. And I decided to wait to execute a position after spread hours. Again, before spread hours, I do not want to have my stop loss and my entry level be 
very close to the spreads, okay, especially the stop loss because the spreads can expand heavily during spread hours and I can get taken out for much more than I initially risked. So the best option, the best way to do it, my best advice is to wait for the spread hours to finish. Spread hours are from 9 to 11 p.m. London time, okay. So at 11 p.m. when the hourly candle closed, I did execute a market buy position, 12 pip stop loss. Unfortunately, uh, on my IC Markets personal account, the spreads calmed down like a minute after the, the spread hours finished. But on the prop accounts from, let's say, Alpha Capital, uh, the spreads were pretty big. So I did get executed for at a worse price. OK, so on the Alpha Capital, I got executed somewhere above like this. On FTMO, the spreads were fine. So Alpha Capital, not the best spreads after spread hours. My mistake, I should have waited for, let's say, two or three minutes. I should have checked the spreads on the C Trader app. But it is what it is. It's cost of business part of the game. So I did end up taking a bigger loss, actually, on the Alpha Capital. Because as you can see, price did reach the stop loss. Price did stop me out on all of my accounts. And basically the IC markets got stopped for 1%, but the Alpha Capital got stopped out for, I think, 1.5% because the position got executed during uh, expanded spreads. The spreads were still expanding. So there's a lesson in this. Make sure after spread hours, if you're going to execute a position, make sure you check the spreads on all of the accounts that you're trading. Again, I use a trade copier, so I just check them on the IC markets, but my mistake. So 1% loss right there, okay? And then what happened next? Price broke the high retraced, broke the low retraced, broke the low and continued with momentum. I like this momentum, I like this push down. It looks nice, but seeing a bit of buying pressure here. So not the best now. Not the best with this uh, large blue candle. Again, how do I know it's large buying pressure? Well, just compare it to most of the candles in the power price action. It just looks kind of large, right? It's kind of as big as all of the candles pushing up, right? Almost as big as this one. So not the best sign. What I want to see for a flag, for example, a large range, nice flat range, no real buying pressure, and then a flag. That would be very nice. That would be perfect for me to take. Again, will I take a quick flag? Mm, I don't think so. I think I would prefer a bit of a range because of this shift right there. But this may be a reversal setup. <clears throat> Not the cleanest ascending, but a ascending nevertheless. So let's see, maybe the momentum can push down from here. Do something like this. Okay, so maybe that can happen. Then I'll look for sell setups right here in the flag. I'm going to put it on the watch list. EJ looks to have some potential. So I am interested for sell setups. Maybe a flag, but best thing for me would be for the price to push down one more time, create an established downtrend, and then give me a nice high probability entry with zero buying pressure. That's it. Moving on to the Aussie and US dollar. Okay, current price approaching my stop loss. So not the best sign, but it is what it is. It's part of the game. <clears throat> Let's see this flag. Okay. For this flag, uh, I was seeing a nice descending channel. Okay. One, two, three, four consecutive breaks of the low. This is even a flat range. So I was actually seeing a flat range. Okay. And then a descending, sort of a descending into the lower liquidity. Now, that's a good sign. That's a very high probability sign. We got a push up. Nice momentum going up. Nice bullish momentum. Nice bullish pressure. And then we get a clean flag formation. Very clean for me. Very small, very tight. No selling pressure for me personally. So I really like this. I really like the structure. Again, the descending was clean. Very clean in my book. The push-up was very nice, very strong. A little bit of wicks, but very small. Uh, the bodies of the candles are very large, so that was very, very nice. Perfect. I would say this is a no-brainer. Okay, I would say I would say this setup is definitely a no-brainer setup. Unfortunately, it did end up being a one percent loss right here. So let's check the price, and yeah, one percent loss. 
but fit the plan, no brainer. I was very, very happy to take this setup. Okay, what happened next? Well, right here. Price went up a little bit, no entries formed. Some people were potentially looking for reversal setups. I wasn't really. Price was kind of overall stuck in a range. This was a very small ascending. Didn't really fit the plan. Just, just I did not feel like this was a high probability setup. This momentum was not that strong either. So yeah, I wasn't looking for reversal setups. But I did take a liquidity sweep entry. Okay, so this is a range bound entry. What did I see? Well, I'm not going to go too deep into it. I saw a couple of very nice confluences, but the best confluence I can uh, I can tell you right now was the multi-tap, okay? One, two, three points creating a very strong liquidity area right there, okay? So the multi-tap confluence works very, very good uh, according to my backtesting. I have seen a lot of very good liquidity sweeps, okay? Market is definitely range bound for me. Here in this area, corrective, range bound, you have a even smaller range here. So these areas are gonna be areas of significance. They are gonna be areas of liquidity and I do expect the price to push into these areas and reject, okay? So another confluence would, for example, be this large selling pressure or this large selling pressure. It's not that large, but it's gonna be selling pressure with stop losses above it, okay? So you're gonna get some sellers here and here and they're gonna put their stop loss in this box they're gonna put it above these highs so that is why that's another added confluence there are also a couple of other ones that i really like so this one for me was a 10 out of 10 no-brainer setup very good liquidity sweep price goes into it rejects with a really nice wick doesn't show a big red candle so the body isn't that big but it still fits the plan especially with this large wick rejecting that area i love these setups when you get a wick like this it's a very good sign that the price has rejected this area uh, i'm not gonna go into the stop loss or the take profit level that is reserved for zentum trading if you want to learn about all of the parameters all of the confluences we have a specific educational videos on that but basically, this did end up reaching the take profit. It's, the take profit is not here. It was a bit lower. Uh, but it did reach it with this new scandal, okay? And this did end up being a 3% winner for me personally, or a free R winner. I risk 0.5% for every single liquidity sweep because still testing it, still implementing it in my live trading, still seeing how exactly it works. Um, that is why I'm not going to go too high with the risk i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go one percent i'm gonna start with 0 0.25 then 0 0.5 then 0 0.75 and then bump it up to the full one percent once i keep trading it for a couple of months okay that is the exact thing you should be doing when you're implementing a new entry into your live trading after heavily heavily back testing it of course do it gradually don't go balls deep uh one percent risk like right away but start with 0 0.25 and then keep bumping it up gradually. After a couple of months, you could reach that 1%. So that's it with this trade. Nice uh, free R winner or 1.5% winner on my personal account and prop accounts as well. I mean, very nice. Very The markets were very flat, very corrective, very range bound, but not volatile. Volatile, the markets were volatile on EJ. Okay, right here. Very, very volatile market. See, that's what I do not want to be seeing because first my stop loss is going to look tiny. 12 pips is going to look non-existent. Second thing, I cannot really get in on a trend here with uh, with this, this chop. Okay, because it's so choppy, so volatile. You do not know what you can expect. And the final trade for today, which looks to be a loss, but it is what it is, it's part of the game is gonna be another flag setup. So what did I like about it? Let's see it. Per price action, pretty range bound, pretty corrective. That's why we took a sweep, okay? Then you get an impulse to the upside right here, this nice impulse going up, and then you get a flag plus. Flag plus, so same sort of methodology as on the Euro and the Japanese Yen. You get the impulse, you get an inside bar. See, this bar is inside of this this one. The high is lower than this one. The low is higher than this low. 
Then you get an outside bar. The high is higher than this one. The low is lower than this one. And then you get an entry candle, which is, has to be a blue candle. This is our entry candle. This one was red, but this one is blue. Market execution, buy, 10 pip stop loss. Nice setup, okay? So, currently, I think it's going to be a 1% loss. It's very close to the stop loss. So this one, unfortunately, is looks to be a 1% loss, but I really like the setup, okay? I think it was a really high probability setup. I like the impulse. Yeah, prior price action, not the best. Prior price action was pretty range-bound and corrective, but I like the impulse. I liked the flag formation as well. I think it was a nice uh, flag plus, and if it's a flag plus, that's even better. Those are even more high probability. They have an even higher win rate. They work out most of the time, so I was happy to take it even with this wick, okay? Flag plus setups, when I see them, I definitely want to exploit uh, that opportunity in the markets, okay? So, next move on the Aussie US dollar, just looking for a large push up or a large push down, okay? Now seeing uh, some big selling pressure, which is a warning sign, right? So I'm just looking for a large push up or a large push down looking for the price to move away from this whole more corrective range bound structure okay so that is my game plan on the aussie and the us dollar not gonna put it on the watch list okay i don't think it's good enough to put on the watch list i'm not seeing much potential maybe look for liquidity sweeps if this price ranges around in the high and the low then look for liquidity sweeps of the upper liquidity area and the lower liquidity area like this. So we shall see if that happens. Moving on, Aussie Japanese Yen. What can we spot on AJ from last, let's close this, from last Wednesday, very corrective, very range bound. Again, just stuck between the low and the high, broke the high, continued to be very corrective, went up, not not much okay not much potential i was not looking for anything i didn't have my order on current price action is interesting to me i am going to put it on the watch list what is the reason the v reversal okay i really really like to trade v reversals on the aussie japanese yen and the new zealand japanese yen for some reason they tend to work out really nicely on these two currency pairs they work out on every single currency pair but they work out even better on AJ and NJ. There was one, where was it? Here, okay, whoop. See, this one, that is exactly what I wanna see. Nice V, nice trend down. That is gonna be on my radar and on the watch list for AJ. So my game plan is to see a large impulse up and then to sell, okay? But I need the confirmation, I need the signature, I need the large impulse down. I'm not gonna execute a sell setup here. Not enough momentum. I wanna see that strong momentum going down. Pound US dollar, always slow, always corrective. Not always, but most of the time. So that's unfortunate. But last Wednesday was here. We were very flat and range bound as I commented. Continued to be very corrective, no opportunities. I was looking for a potential flag right here. Okay, but the flag, did the flag form? I think there was a data change. This low is 461, 466. Yeah, th there was a data change. This low was higher than this low. So this flag was not valid when I was looking at it. If it was, I would have taken this setup on the timed entry. Of course, I used the timed entry for flags on the pound US dollar and euro US dollar but it wasn't valid. And it's good that it wasn't valid because it would have been a loss, okay? So data change, the, the data change saved me for, from a 1% loss because this low used to be higher than this one, making the flag not valid, okay? So price then continues up and then we get another, almost a flag, okay? A flag almost forms right here. So let's see it. So you have the impulse up, not the biggest, not the best, but still I think I would have taken a flag there. You have potential V reversal in the par price action, again, not the cleanest either. But you have 
first low, first high, first low, second high, second low, but it never broke the low. See, a flag never formed. Instead, we broke the high before breaking the low, unfortunately. So that is an unfortunate thing. But because if a flag did form, this would have been running. Let's see, 20 pips. It would be running some okay percentage. It looks to be rejecting now, but again, it is what it is. It happens. Now we're seeing a large shift. Definitely not going to put it on the watch list. Seeing a large shift in momentum. That is a major warning sign. So I'm just expecting a range here, to be honest. I'm just expecting a range between the high and the low. What am I looking for? Just a large push up like this or a large impulse up or down like this. So being more patient, price seems to be corrective on the pound US dollar. Last couple of months have been really slow, really corrective, took some losses as well. So this pair is has not been conducive. But that happens. If you back this the last 10 years of price action, you're going to spot some uh, periods of months, maybe even a whole year of, let's say, very bad, very corrective price action, break even trading, maybe even a bit of losses and just not conducive, conducive markets. But that's normal. Sometimes the pairs can be active, really good, really high probability for a couple of years and then they can be slow for the whole year. For example, 2024 with the pound US dollar has been turning out pretty, pretty slow. But it happens. It's all part of the game, part of the probabilities. Maybe 2025 or let's say Q3 or Q4 of 2024, they may be a lot more active. We shall see. But for now, being more patient with the pound US dollar. Final currency pair on the list is the New Zealand Japanese yen. So let's see this one. Definite uptrend. Not the strongest, but a definite uptrend. Just pushing up, just trucking to the upside okay last Wednesday was around here and I did not see much opportunities I mean price never gave me that super super high probability entry V reversal range see price goes up that's nice no high probability entries here no high probability entries here either just corrective price action here, price breaks the high, retraces, breaks the high, continues, but leaves double wicks. Not the best. Price continues, but shows me some large selling pressure. See? At this point, I was I was looking for buy entries, definitely. This was nice buying pressure. But then we get some large selling pressure, which just does not fit the plan. So price is definitely going up, just breaking the highs, retracing. See here, also breaking the highs, retracing. Price is definitely going up, but not showing me much strength. Not showing me much, not strength, but not uh, many high probability setups. Again, I want to see, or I wanted to see a nice strong push up and a nice small tight flag with no selling pressure. Or a nice strong push up, small pullback, strong break of the high, retest. That never happened anywhere in this price action. Every single entry had too many warning signs. Current price action. Well, it started to ascend here on top, but I need to see it commit. I'm not really seeing a V reversal right, like I'm seeing on the Aussie Japanese yen, so I'm going to be more patient. Maybe my game plan is to see a large push down like this, and then I would look for some sell setups. That is going to be my game plan on the New Zealand Japanese yen. Currently being more patient, okay? Currently, I'm not seeing much price. Broke the high retraced, broke the low retraced. Just to be honest, I'm expecting a bit of range bond price action, if if anything. I'm expecting something like this to happen. So, to sum up, EU looking for a potential reversal down because price is ascending. EJ looking for potential sell setups. Okay, because I'm seeing an ascending and then a nice impulse down. AJ looking for this V reversal to play out, looking for a large push down and to sell. That's going to be it for the trade recap and forecast. Again, had some very nice opportunities, had some very nice setups form in the markets. Took some losses as well, but it's all part of the game, part of the probabilities. 
as long as the markets are conducive and active, that's what I like. Because I know if I just keep executing, keep following the plan, keep playing on the probabilities, the winners will eventually come. Again, you have to get through the losses to get to the winners. So as long as the trades keep appearing, high probability trades, not just any sort of a trade, I need to see a trade that actually fits my plan. As long as they keep appearing, I am satisfied because I know once I get through the losses, the winners will eventually come. It's all part of the game and part of the probabilities. That's it. See you guys in the next video.